Hi, I'm Whitney. Welcome back to my channel here at Nitronix. I wanted to make a video going over something that I struggled with for quite a while and I am still honing in to this day, even as a quote unquote senior engineer, and that's project planning. This is something I, at least in my college days, wasn't taught super effectively to me and it's something that you do kind of have to get a feel for and I wanted to just share some of my tips of how I was able to break it down and how I manage my projects better today. Now I'll be breaking this down into specific project architecture as far as just the main steps I take on a project, not necessarily looking at a specific project. So the first thing I want to go over is how I plan the higher level milestones of a project as a whole. And the way I found that's the most helpful to break that down is to first think of your topic or your objective. What do you want to accomplish with this project? What's the end goal? What overall are you going to be delivering? Is it, oh, I want to write a blog post about some FPGA board I've never used? Is it, oh, I, hey, I want to design a game board or anything you can think of. And in that phase of when you're picking your project and picking your objective, this is also a time where you wanna start doing a little bit of background research of how feasible is it? Um, you don't wanna go too far down the rabbit hole and then find, oh, this was never possible to begin with. So for instance, you don't wanna pick an objective with technology or components that simply aren't going to work and isn't feasible. I've made this mistake several times these are all types of things you need to do in your initial discovery, for lack of a better term, uh, in planning your objective. Because there's no point in spending a bunch of time starting a project when you could have spent a few hours on the front end and determined that it wasn't gonna work at all. Of course, there are exceptions. Sometimes you do get all the way down, you can't all the way down the path and some roadblock comes up that you never could have foreseen. That does still happen. However, you can mitigate a lot of that upfront in your initial discovery for planning your project topic or objective. The second thing you wanna do after you've chosen your topic and determined that your objective is feasible for your project is go through and determine a all-encompassing list of materials that you'll need or bill of materials for the project. Go down and write down everything you can think of. Uh, I'm gonna need this FPGA board, which means I'm gonna need this type of USB cable and this type of SD card and I'll need X number of components, say resistors, these values, or even if you don't know specific values, at least start listing out everything you can think of off the top of your head. Once you start making this bill of materials, if it includes something like maybe a board that you've never used before, uh, I highly recommend getting a hold of it and just getting yourself familiar with it because a big thing with picking out your bill of materials that's gonna impact you later on is a, knowing everything you need. B, do you know how to use everything that's on your bill of materials? If not, how long do you think it's gonna take you to learn it? Is it something that's a close derivative to knowledge that you already have, or is it something totally new to you? Because that's gonna be have, that's going to have to be something you have to take into account for your schedule. Also, is your bill of materials within your budget? Can you even afford it? If you're coming at this from a hobby perspective, you may need to spend some time looking for more affordable alternatives or potentially even making alternatives yourself, which overall is going to push the delivery date or end goal further out in the schedule. Once you've determined your bill of materials, you have everything procured or at least a plan for procurement along with knowing how long it's gonna to take to be delivered, aka lead times, uh, when it's gonna show up. Uh, the next thing you're gonna move into and Arguably, the most important thing after determining feasibility is prototyping. This is a step that unfortunately, I for some reason think that I can skip to save time and it comes back to bite me every single time because even though I've done my due diligence up front and planned the most feasible project I can up front, I've gone through and picked the most optimized materials on my list, things I know how to use. There's still sometimes when you go from paper to practical application, things just don't go together the way you think they're going to. You're going to have to make subtle changes 
on the fly. They're not project ending, but there are gonna be pivots. Pivot! And that is one important thing you do have to learn as an engineer is how to pivot when you get stuck. Sometimes being stuck on something and sticking with it that particular solution and trying to get that particular solution to work isn't always worth it. Sometimes it's worth slightly changing, maybe using a different tool or using a different method to get a result faster. Sometimes that's worth it. And so that's, that's something you want to keep in mind when you first get stuck is think, is it really worth going down this particular method or can I figure something else out faster? Um, and your prototyping phase in your project schedule is the most valuable time. You're not super committed to anything as far as like design. You haven't sunk a ton of hours into it at this point. This is the perfect point in your project that you can change and pivot and not have a whole lot of loss. Be really open-minded in your prototyping phase of your project. So once you complete prototyping and you have a design set, you know what it needs to look like, you've solidified your material list at this point, you've solidified all the tools you're using, you have a base design down, whether that be schematics, software design, all of that. The next phase I break into my project is what I call proven. And what I do during the proven phase is exactly what it sounds, is I'm proving that my design works. I'm going through, I'm buttoning up loose ends, I'm really exploring all the functionalities that I've laid out from my objective. I'm making a really solid project. The proven stage can sometimes be longer or sometimes be shorter than your prototyping phase. It kind of depends on the project. I've had certain projects that the prototyping phase was the guts and the main majority of my project and I've had other projects where the proven phase took a lot longer and was the main chunk of the project. And finally, the last phase of my projects and how I wrap my projects up is what I call the qualification phase of my projects. The qualification phase of my projects is where I go through and I start testing for edge cases. I try to make my design fail. I try to make it break. For instance, I see how does it handle an unexpected power down? Will it boot back up into a known state that it can reset itself to or is it just totally dead? Uh, I came across this in my coffee shop project where I made a web server on an FPGA for my local coffee shop to store their QR code menu. I found with that project, if it lost power unexpectedly and the embedded Linux image wasn't properly shut down, when it would go to reboot, it wasn't able to re-index the webcam properly. So it would just sit there in an infinite boot loop and never come back. And baristas, who I wouldn't expect to have any technical knowledge of Linux command line would have no idea how to fix that. So in my qualification phase for that project, I had to go through and determine how can I add a reset state to this or prevent it from going into this boot loop, which ultimately I was able to add a reset button, which I could then easily put into some directions for the baristas that says, hey, if you lose power, press this button to turn it back on again, essentially. That's the overall method that I follow for my project planning. Uh, just to recap, that's I start off with picking a topic slash objective and verifying the feasibility of that, determining my bill of materials for that project, prototype, 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 <laughs> my proven phase, and then finally my qualification phase. And I've found that following these five steps gives me a very well-rounded, high quality type project that I can depend on and I know is good as a deliverable to basically anybody, whether it's just for myself personally as a blog project, whether that's in the professional environment of a proper office at a large engineering firm, it's something that I know will show my qualification and my, in my integrity as an engineer. So now having gone over the overall structure that I follow for every project, I wanted to show you how I translate that down into daily tasks. And I think this part is really important because I used to get stuck with making the overall milestones for a project, the overall goals that I need, knowing that a project was due three months from now. Those parts were pretty easy initially when I started project planning. But then next thing I know, 
three months is tomorrow and in typical engineer fashion, I do everything in one night. Everything's done at the last minute. And that worked in college, but that didn't really work that well out in real life. Uh, I either totally missed deadlines or my work just wasn't the quality that I wanted it to be. And especially as I got older, then I started working from home and time has no meaning to me now. So I have to be very diligent in making sure that I know what I need to be doing on a daily basis in order to reach my overall milestones. And this method that I'm showing you of what I've learned, this has taken a while to perfect. Um, I definitely recommend taking this as a suggestion and figuring out what works best for you. And the answer for you may be still leaving everything to the last minute because after all, we all are engineers and we do work the best under pressure. So the first guideline with breaking down your overall milestones into individual tasks that I have is thinking about it in terms of engineering hours. And I say this because breaking things down in terms of engineering hours is the most common format you're going to encounter, whether that be in the startup, a large engineering firm, or working freelance when you're putting out quotes. And the first thing to think of is that there are eight hours in a day, 40 hours in a week, and 160 hours in a month. Those are your working hours that you have in that amount of time. And furthermore, those are the number of working hours if you work 100% full focus all the time, which we know isn't gonna happen. So if I slot something for eight solid hours, that doesn't mean necessarily that it's going to be done in a single calendar day, especially if you're juggling multiple projects, which I know just about everywhere I've gone, I've had to juggle multiple projects. So when I would slate something for eight hours, I'd be like, oh, I have that done in a day. That'll be done tomorrow and always forgetting that I have three other projects to worry about and I'm not gonna spend eight hours on that one project in a day. So when you're planning engineering hours, keep in mind that the number of hours that you plan aren't all gonna happen consecutively over a single calendar day or week or month. So even though I might slate 40 hours worth of work for something, that sounds like a lot, that's it, that's a whole week that's not gonna happen over a single calendar week most of the time, which that really trips me up for a long time. So if I slate 40 hours for project one, 40 hours for project two, 40 hours for project three, then you may have to make sure that you have 120 hours total or three weeks as a deadline for all of those essentially, or you have to start ordering them in whichever, what, what's due first. What do you need after week one? That's gonna push project two to the end of week two and the project three to the end of week three and so on. Or if you wanna work on everything in parallel, that means all three projects, although slated for only 40 hours, is gonna take three calendar weeks. So that's kind of a game of something you have to play with, get an intuition for. Um, but just kind of keep that pitfall in mind up front. Uh, the second tip that I have is I like to break my tasks down into what I call technical tasks and admin tasks. And the reason that I break things down between technical tasks and admin tasks is I have days where my brain can't focus. I can't remember what two plus two is. I mean, that's a hyperbole, but you know what I mean? You have those days where you just, things aren't, the wheels aren't spinning. And I like to take those days and instead of totally wasting them, I do my admin tasks, which admin tasks can be responding to emails, doing the paperwork, anything that doesn't involve technically intensive brain tasks. And then I can reserve those hardcore technical tasks for the hardcore development design, um, days I'm designing a new filter or doing a board layout. Those are gonna be days that I'm only gonna have probably one or two tasks on my to-do list for that day because the other thing is, is the more technically intensive a task is, the less to-do items you should have for the rest of the day. You really need to focus on those and technical tasks one at a time. Um, I feel like when I was in college, I had an easier time multitasking, but I found that as I've gotten in further into my career, it's better to focus on a singular 
thing and really think it through, think it thoroughly to be able to put out the best design you can. So to sum that up, break down all of your tasks into admin and technical tasks. Don't put too many tasks on your list in a single day. You won't get through them. It'll just make you feel defeated. I know that's something I struggle with. I'll put 10 tasks on my to-do list and it won't seem like a lot, but one really technically intensive task will just dominate my day. I won't feel like I've gotten anything done. And especially when I'm stuck at home and I have no outer sense, that can really make me spiral. And then I don't end up productive at all. Uh, and that can bleed over into my next day. So, um, so that's, kind of a per that's kind of an example of a personal thing. Um, balancing the number of tasks you have on a day is something you'll kind of have to get used to for yourself. What's the best workload for you? I, some people thrive under more pressure. If you're one of those people, then go ahead, pile on the task. Get a, just be honest with yourself and get a feel for what are you actually retroactively getting done? How much are you achieving? Which is my next tip is if you don't get anything done on your specific to-do list or you don't get specific tasks done, go back and write in what did you do that day? What tasks did you complete? And that way you can start to, as you're kind of getting better at your project planning, kind of honing in uh, how you work specifically, you can kind of see, well, I planned 10 tasks for this day, but I actually only got four done. Maybe I should start putting less on my to-do, spreading my timelines out, pushing my deadlines out because deadlines mean nothing if you always miss them. Uh, something that I have learned is even if it's really hard up front to tell management or tell somebody that something's going to take longer than it should, it is much better to give them that expectation up front rather than to just go ahead and promise them the earlier due date and completely miss it. Uh, there are, I've, I've met a lot of managers that have said you will get a lot more respect for being more realistic up front and even under promising, over delivering. So even giving yourself a little bit of slack in your deadlines, it is much better to deliver early than it is late. If there's anything I didn't quite cover in depth or if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I would love to do another video on this and dive into some of those. So if you've made it this far, thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.